but they've never seen her as bold as this. in trouble, she brings it home to Ruth. So we get charged. They have boundaries now. They approach carefully and film. And she uses them in case of emergencies. It's a good working relationship. And the years have seen them grow close without affecting their personal ethics and rules of engagement. She's a little used to us for filming while underneath the vehicle. So I might as well get a shot of her at rest there. It's quite used to us getting out and moving around the vehicle. Her contact with other leopards is negligible. So when she sees that other leopard reflected in her lens, she's very interested. You can virtually see her trying to figure out how to get inside and play. It's this reflection that really holds her attention. It's all about her imaginary friend but still, I don't like interacting like this. These moments are for those TV characters or grizzly maniacs. I prefer to keep her unadulterated by human contact. Forced now to spend longer within the confines of their vehicle, the Joubert's have to be more inventive about their exercise. Returning to camp, the thick Okavango sound is ideal for a little walk on the wild side. Yes, Derek puts it into low range, second gear and off we go. The speed is just right, the sand just thick enough to keep the vehicle moving slowly in the ruts of the track. All we have to do is make sure we don't trip and fall. Getting run over in the middle of the bush, now that would be embarrassing. Two, actually. Two, it must be those two young males. Those buffalo hunters. The length of the Joubert's day and night vigils depend on the filming potential or just the distance Lacadema has led them away from their camp. And sometimes it's just easier to stay out in their vehicle for the night. And it's at times like this that the hours mount up and their bond with the leopard grows. They understand her mood at a glance. Now, when it looks like she may jump down into the car, I back away. You can see the disappointment in her eyes sometimes, but we've spent quite a lot of time making sure that she stays wild. We've never once reached out and touched her. Did you get a real sense that we could? Yet they've reached a level where they seem to anticipate her moves. Connected in a, in a way very few people have ever been with a wild animal. It still feels as if we've been used though, especially when she chooses to come to us and use us for cover. Hyenas may steal her food, 
But it's the baboons that are the real threat to her. They are her nemeses, and they've spotted her. Now Derek and Beverly could get caught in the crossfire, and they have to be careful about being drawn into the conflict. She nearly lost her life like this when she was less than a month old. We stayed nearby quietly then, even though we were watching our subject on the verge of being killed. And we'll do the same today. That doesn't stop us from hoping and praying that she'll get through it okay. Searching for Lachadima yields all sorts of other gems. Male giraffe battled out for hours to the very brink of exhaustion. It's cut and thrust of a different kind. But it's also an ever-changing backdrop to what Lachadima sees every day. This blend of her experiences and her instincts is what we're trying to discover and find out on this project. Predators fascinate us because we share so many of their instincts, and yet they have really hunted us for thousands of years. Certainly we are now coming to appreciate that without them, we would be much worse off. Imagine a world without lions and leopards. Out here, they are that hinge that everything pivots off. They've lost her again, and it's becoming harder and harder to follow her as she approaches her third year and independence from her mother's territory. What have you got there, Derek? Yeah, it looks like we've got uh, tracks here, Lachadima, no problem at all. Eh? Are they fresh, the tracks? Fresh, yeah, a couple of hours old, maybe even less. Derek, I'm hearing um, alarm calls. Just out there, I think uh, definitely squirrels and vivid monkeys. Okay, let's do it then. As usual, the forest speaks to them, conspiring to point out the leopard that everyone fears. A constant stream of insults, a litany of abuse that irritates and finally breaks her resolve to stay hidden. Lachadima is outed and in a mood. We've been worried. She's alone now, away from her mother permanently. Hunting is tough for her. This is a turning point in her life. You can just tell sometimes from that look in her eye that she means business. If I was a monkey right now, I'd be on the highest, flimsiest branch. Being on the ground is pure folly. And this is a three-dimensional game of life and death. If she succeeds, it'll be a landmark hunt. If she fails, she'll come flying out of the trees and seriously injure herself. To be here right now, to see her successes, 
It's like going to a graduation ceremony. This is a real highlight. It is quite clear that she is going to be all right now. She has become independent and a real leopard at last. They've come a long way. She has been reflected in their lenses as much as they have been reflected in her eyes. And today, with this last kill, Derek and Beverly decide that it's time to wrap it all up and to edit their work to show to the world a three-year journey that has changed their lives. I don't know how anybody could put an animal like this in the sights of a gun and still sleep at night.